Hello and welcome to WVU Medicine Tuesday Talks. I'm your host, Mary Ravazio Menard. Recently, WVU Medicine Urologic Oncology Surgeons at the WVU Cancer Institute became the first in the state to use a cutting edge surgical system to perform a single port partial nephrectomy. They used the single port robot platform, an exciting advancement in kidney and prostate cancer treatment for patients who are not candidates for open or multiple port surgeries. So today we're talking about single port robotic kidney and prostate surgery with Dr. Ali Hajaron, Chief of Urologic Oncology at the WVU Cancer Institute. Welcome Dr. Hajaron to Tuesday Talks. Thank you Mary for having me today, I'm really excited to be here. We're glad to have <laughs> you here. So let's start first with what is urologic oncology? Sure, that's a, that's a great question. So um, first, uh, we have a group of urologic oncologists at West Virginia University. Uh, urology is a, a subset of surgery that focuses on the kidney, bladder, prostate, and uh, genitalia. Um, and uh, to, we are tr trained about five years of training after medical school to learn how to be surgeons to specialize in this area. Mm -hmm. um, for some of us who have a special interest in cancer, um, we do an extra two years of training, a fellowship training, um, specifically to focus on managing patients with cancers in the kidneys, uh, prostate, bladder, for, for instance. And so, um, so urologic oncology is that special group of, of doctors who have that expertise in, in doing surgery and um, helping with coordinating all of the care that goes along with uh, cancers in those areas. Okay, it sounds like pretty wide area there. <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in West Virginia, too, we, ha we have, um, you know, some of the highest rates of, of newly diagnosed cancer. And, um, oh, wow. and, and, and one of the good things about urologic oncology is we get to treat men and women. And um, if, you, if you go through all of those different areas, kidneys, bladder, prostate, um, and adrenal glands, uh, that, that accounts for almost a fourth of all, of all of human cancers that we treat and manage in neurologic oncology. So we're, we're very busy and we're happy to take care of people of West Virginia with these problems. All right, so what exactly is single port robotic surgery? Sure, so, so single port robotic surgery, um, urologists do a lot of our surgeries in, in a minimally invasive fashion. In the past, we used to make very uh, large incisions on patients um, in order to access the kidneys, in order to access the bladder and the prostate. And over the years, we've found that we're able to do surgery through very small incisions, like keyhole size incisions. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, traditionally, over the past several years, we would make small, several small incisions, about five or six, um, in order to put instruments inside the body to do the surgery. Um, and we found that that would help patients recover from the procedure faster, and we were able to get good cancer outcomes. Uh, more recently, over the past, really just a few years, uh, a new surgical instrument came out called the single port robot. And so instead of having five or six small incisions, we're able to do the surgery through just one small incision or potentially with a second one for an assistant to use during the operation. And um, it's been very exciting. Um, they're, they're only right now, as far as FDA approved surgeons that are allowed to use, it would be a, a head and neck surgeon, an ENT doctor and mm -hmm. urologist. Um, and urologists were, were, because we have so much experience with this type of surgery, that well, we were able to get it approved and, and start using it for patients to help, help do these operations and um, and so that's what we're using it for kidney and, and prostate surgery to uh, those are the first ones that we've been using it for at this point yeah why is this considered a significant advancement why is this a big deal mm -hmm. sure so it is a big deal it's mm -hmm. a, it is a big deal it's very nice because we're able to instead of putting all these incisions on patients and we would all uh, in the past we would have to um, move a lot of organs around in order to get to the prostate or get to the kidney. We'd have to move the bowel around, sometimes the liver, the spleen, pancreas, and anytime you have to move those organs around, there's always a risk of having an injury, and particularly in patients that have had a lot of other surgeries, there's scar tissue there. Um, it, can, it can put them at risk, and it can add a lot of time to the surgery. Um, some patients might not even be candidate for prostate or kidney surgery, just given the fact of all of their prior surgeries. So the nice thing about the single port robot what makes it exciting is that we're able to place this small incision 
and avoid the abdominal cavity completely in, in small places and go straight to the organ that we're working on. And uh, a word that's been used is we're kind of more regionalizing the surgery so other organs and the rest of the body is less affected and it helps patients recover faster and get back to their normal activities faster. Just, you're not taking, you're just like, well, taking a shortcut. You're not taking the long way around, right? That's how it feels. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times when our early experience, we're finding that we're able to do the surgery. Sometimes, you know, with, you think with new equipment and new technology, it might take longer, but actually we're going faster because we're basically, that's how we think of it. We're kind of taking a shortcut to, to get to the organs that we really need to be operating on instead of having to, to, to manipulate other organs around there, so. So does this expand treatment options for kidney and prostate cancer patients? I believe it does because there, there are some patients in the past that um, would come to our clinic or would get referred to my clinic and are, are told that, they're, that they cannot have surgery for prostate cancer um, because, because either they have many incisions or another thing to talk like about scar too. scar tissue? Yes, yeah, scar tissue. Or there are also patients that have, for prostate cancer surgery, um, when we do it the traditional route, patients would have to be um, put in a position where their head is down and the rest of their body is up very high in order ah. to get all of the bowel to, to get out of the pelvis so we can operate. Um, and, and patients with heart and lung problems, they a lot of times wouldn't tolerate such a procedure. With the single port robot, patients can lay flat. It takes a lot of pressure off the heart and lungs. And so people who may not have been candidates in the past due to heart and lung problems or the prior surgeries, now we're opening up and expanding um, you know, surgery for the prostate as an option for them, where in the past it may not have been. So it really, it's really been nice to add that option for patients um, uh, who didn't have it in the past. That's great, that's great. Um, so what are the benefits of uh, single port robotic surgery and then what are the risks? So you know some of the benefits again a faster operation um, less 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 stress on the heart and lungs um, we're also cons starting to work on sending patients home the same day from wow. after the operation in the past you know people would stay in the hospital for anywhere between one to three nights after a surgery like this um, but patients are doing so well after these procedures we don't have really a reason to keep them in the hospital so so oh, wow. so um, so it's been uh, nicer for patients to go home and, and recover better at home uh, than having to stay in the hospital. So those are some of the benefits. And also, you know, we have excellent um, visualization, good cancer control, we're seeing good cancer outcomes. It's, it's been safe, um, uh, faster, effective, you know, all, all, all are pointing in good directions for using this new wow. technology. Yeah. So improving outcomes too. Absolutely, yes. Wow, that's really exciting. So what would be the risks of this kind of procedure? So the risk for single port surgery, so not, not everyone's going to be a candidate. There's still some patients that have very large tumors or, or some complex anatomy with mm -hmm. their cancer that may be better served with either a, a multiple s a approach or pr even we still do open surgery as well, which is one of the benefits of coming to a place like WVU is that our surgeons are, 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 are trained to do all different types of surgery and not just one type. So, um, so but pa patients that, that, that may not have the right tumor or maybe it's, it's too big to, to fit through a small incision, we may have to do one of the other, the other types. Um, and that might not be a good a good option for them. Okay, okay. So, um, how long usually is the recovery, typical recovery from this procedure? Whether it be for kidney, I mean, I don't know, is it different for kidney or prostate well, patients? Yeah, that's a good question. So, you know, for prostate patients, when we'd have to go through the abdomen, I would usually tell patients that they have to, t you know, take it easy for about, at home for about four to six weeks because there's a risk of getting a hernia or bulging mm. at one of the sites of the incision. Um, but since, like you, you like you mentioned before, we're, we're t taking a shortcut, avoiding the abdominal cavity, patients don't have to take that long off of their normal activities. We want patients to be back to kind of all of their normal activities within two weeks, you know, of their operation wow. instead of instead of having to take that long. So that's for, for prostate and kidney surgery. We want them to be back to their normal activities faster um, instead of having to take that much time off of off of what they like to do. So is is this procedure um, an alternative treatment to, to radiation? I mean, if you have this, can you bypass radiation? That's our goal um, for, for, for prostate cancer surgery. We know that um, radiation and, and surgery can both be options. Um, some patients who have more advanced types of prostate cancer might need 
more than one different treatment modality in their total and and all of their their treatment. And so we like to use surgery whenever we can in case their cancer were to ever come back. We have radiation as a back as a backup plan um, to help to help treat the treat their cancer. So so by having the single port option, we're able to use surgery as our first line and then keep keep radiation as our second line instead of having to use radiation as the first line option in, in a lot of cases. So so yes, um, so we're able to bypass it in, in a lot of cases. Do, with this uh, with this technology, wow! Now you mentioned that you, you, we've already used this for for kidney and prostate cancer surgery. Could this be used for any other procedures or any other kind of surgeries? Sure. So, so there are right now for the ones that are. FDA approved are for kidney and prostate, and then also the head and neck surgeries. There are other um, other types of uh, surgeons that are looking into trying to use it, but they're usually for cl on clinical trials being tested at this point. They hasn't been um, tested out enough um, to be able to know if it's safe to do for other operations. But I think the the way that the the trend is going, we've gotten less and less invasive as time's gone on, yeah. and so so I I do believe that the, this is where the future is going. And it's nice, you know, here at WV we're kind of at the beginning of that curve where the rest of the surgery will head that way in the future, I think. Yeah, it's very exciting. It's very yeah. exciting. Um, <laughs> okay, so who is then, who is a good candidate for single port robotic surgery? So typically the things that I'm looking for in, in clinic for patients, for prostate, for example, um, we do imaging for our patients with prostate cancer. We have very good imaging to look at the size of the prostate gland, to look and see where their cancer is. Um, as long as the prostate is in with a certain size, so one thing that we look at is, uh, uh, an example is about 80, 80 grams, or, or what that would be like the size of maybe two or three golf balls altogether. If it's that size, it's too big, we know that it would be better to do with a, a, um, with the multiport robot. Um, but if a, if a prostate's an average size gland, and which most are, and um, and the, the cancer's within an area where we can reach it, and we feel like that we can, we can remove it all with surgery, those are the patients that we're gonna offer it to. Um, other than that, they're not, we basically opened it up to most patients. Um, there's not many patients that we're turning away from this type of surgery, but besides the size of their gland, and if they've had prior hernia surgery, sometimes that one will get in the way a little bit. But um, but other than that, we're basically op opening up for all patients. So this really is a big deal. <laughs> I yeah. mean, this opens up a whole new world. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about this, the single port partial nephrectomy that was done recently? Because this was first in the state, correct? Yes, we're the first in the state to do the partial nephrectomy, which is um, what that surgery is, is patients that have kid kidney tumors that are small or um, that aren't encompassing the whole kidney, we're able to remove the tumor and save the kidney. And so it's oh, a wow. very, it's a technically um, challenging operation because um, the kidneys get a lot of blood flow. About a fourth of the body's blood flow is going through the kidneys at all time and filtering out the waste and turning into urine. Um, and so you have to be able to um, dissect out the blood supply to the kidney, um, stop it periodically to, to, to take the tumor out and then sew the kidney back up securely so it doesn't bleed or leak any urine. And so, and you have to do this all in a timely manner to get blood flow back to the kidney. So um, it, it is a technically cha challenging and um, sometimes a, a little bit of a risky operation. And so um, we were, when, when we took it on with the single port robot, we wanted to make sure we had some experience first, which we did. And we were able, we've done two of them so far. We did one, another one this week, um, where we, uh, uh, just last week, where we, we, we removed the kidney tumor using this route and just kept the incision very small. And it was very successful. Patients did very well, um, no issues at all. So, so. So that, that's, that was the partial nephrectomies, but you're doing the prostate uh, surgeries a couple the, times a week, right? Yeah, we're we're mm -hmm. we're we're doing the prostate surgery ever since we've opened up the the this technology. We're trying to increase to doing it a couple times a week, and so um, in the kidney surgery, we're hoping to increase the volume there too. We're just finding the right tumors and the right patients to to try to to do the first cases on essentially. What kind of patient feedback are you getting on these procedures? Patients are really loving it. They they say that you know they're getting back to their normal activities faster. 
very minimal pain. Um, another thing too, again, as as cancer surgeons, we our, our main goal is to cure the cancer, sure. you know, and but also cosmetically too, um, you know, uh, uh, people like their body image better when they only have one or two small incisions that are barely noticeable, as opposed to having multiple ones or very large ones. So if we're able, again, that's not our primary goal, but when we can do it, we like to have that as a as a, one of the benefits as well yeah. that you see with this with this single port surgery. I imagine that's a painful reminder. Yeah. Know. Exactly. Yeah. The uh, yeah. So if we can minimize that and 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 cure the cancer, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Okay. So let's talk about the experience of the urologic uh, oncology team at the WVU Cancer Institute. You guys are doing exciting <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah. So we, we have a big team of doctors that we work together. So there are th three surgeons um, that had the fellowship training, um, like like I did. So I work in a group of three surgeons. We have two uh, uh, advanced uh, nurse practitioners that work with us in our group, and they just specialize in urologic cancers. A special, um, uh, we have a nursing team that works with us, um, and also, you know, every week we have our we have a big multidisciplinary group. That means we have doctors who not only do surgery but also do medical oncologists who give chemotherapy. We have radiologists, radiation oncologists, pathologists, and in our in our group we meet every Wednesday and review cases of of cancer. Um, of new new urologic cancers and we come to a group you know consensus on what would be the best plan for them and I think that's one of the important things of coming to a place like a, like here because we have that group of doctors who you're not just getting one opinion you're getting uh, the opinion of a group and knowing that that multiple people are looking at your case and, and taking care of you so so that's that's what I like about working here and, and having that big group uh, approach sure sure and I imagine I mean this this has got to give a lot of hope to to cancer patients I think so. I think I think so. Especially just like I said, those patients who just m maybe felt like surgery was out of the question for them, or that yeah. they were told that it wasn't an option, were able to say, um, "We can safely do it now um, with this with this new approach," which is a uh, which is which is why we're here so to do stuff like this. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> So before we go, I, I want to ask you, what do you think is the most important thing you want our viewers to know about single port robotic surgery for kidney and prostate cancer? Sure. So, I, you know, I'd like our patients and our audience to know that um, that we have great experience here with with doing it. Um, again, it's very it's very early on the on the curve for urologists across the country. There's only around a hundred or so hospitals in the entire United States. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, so we're we're in the top percentage of people that are that are offering this procedure for these patients. Um, but we, with we have a very high volume big group of doctors who are working together always there to back each other up and so single port is a uh, is a good option for patients who have prostate cancer a good option for patients who have kidney cancer who can who are interested in having the least invasive approach and in, in getting back to their normal activities faster so you don't have to leave the state for this kind of of advanced treatment. That's correct. That was our main goal because we wanted our patients to have the feel comfortable, you know, staying here at home and, and having their surgery here at home and instead of having to leave or go somewhere else for, uh, you know, the, the top line surgery. Right here in our, I always say our front yard, yeah, not exactly. our backyard. It's right here in the front yard. It's right in the front yard, yeah. <laughs> That's yep. great. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining us today and sharing all this, I mean, really fascinating hopeful information for cancer treatment. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> that brings us to the end of this edition of Tuesday Talks. For more information about urology care, visit wvumedicine.org slash urology. And join us on the next Tuesday Talks on October 17th, when we'll talk about microsurgical breast reconstruction with WVU Medicine plastic and reconstructive surgeon, Dr. Mahed Malouf. I'm Mary Ravazio Menard, and on behalf of Dr. Hajaran and everyone at WVU Medicine, thanks for joining us.